Hello, boys and girls. Welcome to Kids Connection. My name is Audrey Zorik. I am the director of Kids Connection here at the Lake Drive Church, a place where we learn how to connect with each other and with God. I am so happy that you join us today, and I want to welcome every one of you to Kids Connection. I miss you guys so much, and I can't wait for you to be here at Kids Connection again. But until then, I hope you are still being good boys and girls at home. Last week, we celebrated Easter, and we even had communion with Pastor James. What an amazing experience that was. It was very emotional remembering what Jesus did for us on the cross, for me and for you. Now this week, we're going to continue the story after Easter. But before we get there, we're going to sing our song of the day. Because something is going on all around us. And it's amazing. Sing with us. Wow, that was such a fun song. Did you have fun? I did. And thank you for singing with us. It's always good to know that you enjoy singing all the songs here at Kids Connection. Let's pray. Dear Jesus, thank you so much for another beautiful day. 
Thank you for all the boys and girls who are watching this program right now. We ask that you be with them, be with mom and dad, and be with us as we worship your name. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Have your mom or your dad or your grandparents baked bread at home for you. Yummy! That smell of fresh bread is awesome! In our mission story today, we're going to hear a story where people use fresh baked bread to share the love of Jesus with others. Let's watch our mission story. In the still, dark, and early mornings, flour and water meet. They rise with yeast and are shoved in an oven to be transformed by heat. The aroma fills the air, sending an irresistible invitation to mouth-watering delights. One by one, people come to order, to socialize, and laugh. Every day, people of all ages and different ethnicities line up at this bakery, eager to savor delicious bread. Making bread takes time and patience. It takes loving hands to mix ingredients and press them together until the dough is ready to rise and grow. So it is with people. It takes time and patience to cultivate trust and friendship, to warm their lives and invite them to follow Jesus. At the Trapezia Global Mission Urban Center of Influence in Bulgaria, staff members offer visitors more than food. Here, people find room to interact and participate in a variety of courses and activities. As they make new friends, visitors are invited to become volunteers themselves. This way, they can give back and help others too. Dimitur is a regular volunteer who found purpose in Trapezia by tutoring math. There are good people here, and I developed good relationships with different people. So I want to give my best to others. I feel a strong desire to learn more about God and the Bible. I have this idea that I have to help, and if I can, I'm going to do it. I am not a math teacher. I'm an engineer. But here, I help kids with math. Dimitur travels 10 kilometers every day. Sometimes he comes on foot. He started as a customer, then he became a volunteer, and now he is a baptized Seventh-day Adventist. Like Dimitur, many people who come to Trapezia find the bread of life. The owners of Trapezia have seen how centers of influence like this can work as a platform to engage the community and form friendships God gave us this place to keep us close to people. God showed us that we needed a place where people felt accepted and at home. That's why we established a bakery, because it smells like home. In Bulgaria, people eat a lot of bread. This is how Christ worked. He was close to people. He offered them the bread of life. He healed them and took care of them. And we want to do the same. The leaders at Trapezia invite you to pray for this growing group of new believers. Please pray for this urban center of influence and many others around the world that find creative ways to introduce people to Jesus. Thank you for supporting urban centers of influence through Global Mission. Now as always, don't forget to ask mom and dad to click on the link above and donate to the missionaries. Now our offering this Saturday is going to help places like the bakery so they can continue to share the love of Jesus with other people. Now, how have you been doing? What are you doing at home lately? Are you enjoying a new way of school or spending some time with mom or dad or grandparents? I know that some of you don't go to school yet, but in a way, we're all experiencing something different. Just remember something, you're always on my mind. I miss you guys. And I am so happy that we get to spend this time at Kids Connection every week. Don't forget to come back to the Kids Connection page later in the week and check out additional material just for kids. We have new videos for children's worship, fun activity pages, and much more. After you watch today's video, just scroll down to the bottom of this page where you can see a lot more to do. 
Now, last week we learned in our Sabbath school the story of Easter and that Jesus died and rose again. Today we're going to learn what happened after that, after his resurrection. But before we get to that, I think my friend Claudio is here. It was his birthday last week, and let's see what he has to say. Come on. Well, hello, boys and girls. Here. I want you to meet my friend Claudio. Hi Claudio, how are you? I'm fine, how are you? I'm good, thank you, thank you for asking. Thanks for coming here today. I hear that you had a birthday party last week? Yes, I had a birthday party. Oh, that's that. birthdays are, are the best. Did you get a lot of presents? Yes, lots of presents. Good, good, I'm so excited, so happy for you. Happy birthday, by the way. What did you get? Lots of presents. Oh, really? Okay, okay. And and what was your favorite? Mm, I, it was a soccer ball. Oh, really? Oh, soccer is my favorite. I love soccer. Do you have your ball with you? Yes, I do. Can I see it? No. No? Why? Because it's mine. Oh, I know it's yours. I know it's yours. But I, I, I just want to see it because it was your favorite, and I want to see it. No. Oh, come on, Claudio. Let me see. Boys and girls, do you want to see his soccer ball? Mm. Just a little bit? Can we see it just for a little bit? Mm. Okay. But it's mine. Oh, I know. I understand. It's your ball. Okay. Do you need help? Mm -mm -mm -mm. Okay. He doesn't need help. I think you do need help. No. Whoa. That is such a nice ball. Can I tell No. Oh, no. Mm -mm -mm. It's mine. I, I know it's yours, but I, I like to see. I like to kick the ball. I like to bounce the ball a little bit. Can I do that? Mm -mm 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 -mm. Okay, Claudio. Okay, but you know, it's, it's much better when we play soccer with two people. No, uh, but it's mine. It's... I understand. It's your ball. It's your ball, and, and it's a nice ball. Mm. Claudio, can, can we try to play together? Uh, no, no, I don't know. Okay, Claudio, I, I, I know. I'm not going to take the ball from you. I just want to play with you because I like soccer. No, I don't think so. Yes, Claudio, I promise I'm not going to take it from you. Promise? Oh, really? Oh, thank you, Claudio. Okay. Okay, okay. So you kick it to me, and I'll kick it back to you, and I'll hit it back to you, okay? Here we go. Oh. Whoa. It is such a nice ball. Thank you. Here we Here. go. Thank you, Claudio. Thank you, Claudio. Oh, there. Ah, nice. Oh, nice. Okay, Claudio. I'm going to hit it to you. You hit your head, okay? Okay. Oh, cool. That was nice. Here, let me try it. Ah. ah, good catch. Good catch. See, Claudio, wasn't it nice to play together? I guess. Yeah, it's always nice to play soccer together because, you know, when you play by yourself, you have to run after the ball. You have to chase it. Sometimes you kick the ball far away. And when you play with someone, you kick that ball to the person and the person kicks back to you. That wasn't that bad, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. And I didn't take your ball, like I promised. Yeah, I guess you didn't. Yes, Claudio. Thank you for letting me play with you. And happy birthday, by the way. Thank you. Bye. It was good seeing you, Claudio. Bye-bye. I'll see you later. Okay. Say bye-bye to the boys and girls. Bye. Bye. Happy birthday. 
Wow, did you guys see that? Claudio didn't want to share his soccer ball with me. He thought I was going to take his ball. Have you ever seen anybody who doesn't like to share things? Or that knows something so good and they don't want to share with anybody? In today's lesson, we're going to learn something that we don't want to keep it to ourselves. Something that we need to share with everyone. And I hope you don't do like Claudio. Keep it to yourself. I hope that today's lesson you shared with at least one person this week. Just one. And now, let's sing our song of the day. Because something is going on all around us. Let's pray. Dear Jesus, thank you so much for another Kids Connection program. Thank you for all the boys and girls, and moms and dads who are watching this program today. Bless them, keep them safe, and thank you so much because you died on the cross for us. Help us to share this love with others, with at least one person this week. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Thank you so much for being a part of another Kids Connection program. 
and share the lesson you're about to hear with at least one person this week. We have a lot of things happening at our Kids Connection page. So make sure you come back this week and check out additional materials on the bottom of this page, graceandcondition.com forward slash Kids Connection. We have crafts, we have safe games for kids, and children's worship new videos. And all this is specially made for you. I hope to see you again next week for another Kids Connection program. Thanks for watching today. God bless you. Bye-bye. See you next week. Hi, good morning. Welcome to Sabbath School. Today we're going to be talking about Jesus, the risen King. We hope you enjoy it. From the moment Adam and Eve sinned, God's plan to rescue people from their sin was in progress. So, at just the right time, God sent his only son, Jesus, to the earth. Jesus grew up and began to tell people about God's plan. He did many miracles to show his great power and to prove he was more than just a normal man. He was God's son. He healed the blind. He healed crippled people so they could walk. He calmed the wind and the waves during a terrible storm. And he walked on water. Also, among many of the countless other miracles, Jesus fed 5,000 people with a boy's small lunch of fish and bread. I have a bag here. It says taste on it. So let's see what's in this bag. Sammy, would you like to come up and, and look, at, look for us? What's in there? Bread. Bread. Would you like some? Yeah. Go ahead and take some. <laughs> would you like some too? Thank you. Okay. So in this bag is the bread that Jesus gave to the 5,000 people. So one way that we can experience Jesus is through the taste. Hearing. Hmm, I wonder what this one's going to be. The religious leaders heard what Jesus had to say and refused to believe Jesus was the Son of God. They had in their minds already what the deliverer of God's people was supposed to look like and what he was supposed to do. And Jesus did not fit their ideas. They wanted a king who would take their country back from Rome and give them the power. They were jealous of Jesus and his power, and they didn't like that he had so many people following him. So they made a plan to have him killed. They wanted him to die in a public, painful way so they could scare people away from following him. So they had him crucified on a cross. It was a horrible cruel and painful death. Let's see what's in our bag. Oh, a hammer. be three nails? Kalina? Because Jesus' feet were nailed to the cross too. So his feet and what else were nailed to the cross? Hands. Okay, his feet and his hands were nailed to the cross. So normally when they did a crucifixion, they would put one nail through each hand and then one nail through the crossed feet. I want you to listen very carefully.
wood is breaking. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Especially if you're a follower of Jesus, listening to those nails go into his hands and feet. But they did not take Jesus' life. He willingly gave himself because he knew God's plan for our salvation. Jesus' followers to sat, were sad to see him die and sad to place his body in a tomb. After a big stone was rolled in front of the tomb, Pilate, the governor in charge, sent soldiers to guard it day and night because he didn't want anyone to steal Jesus' body. No one could have gotten into or out of the tomb without the soldiers knowing. says snow. Hmm. I wonder what this is about. Very early on the third day after Jesus' death, some women were on their way to Jesus' tomb. Looks like we have a jar with some spices in it. Would you like to come and smell? Mm -hmm. Does that smell good? All right. What does it smell like? Uh, sugar. Smells like sugar? Mm -hmm. What does it smell like, Karina? It smells like cinnamon. Cinnamon? There's a lot of cinnamon in here. There's also nutmeg. Can coriander. to put spices on Jesus' body. Do you know why the women were taking the spices? Does anybody know? Sammy? To put them on Jesus' body. To put them on Jesus' body, that's right. So when someone dies today, a funeral home prepares the body for burial. But during the biblical times, people would prepare the body with spices and ointments if they could afford to. These spices and ointments were designed to cover the smell of a dead body. These women wanted to honor Jesus' burial with the respect they felt he deserved. When they arrived at the tomb, though, there was an earthquake. <gasps> yeah. Have any of you been through an earthquake? No. Yeah, but I didn't feel it. Okay. There was an earthquake just last summer. It was kind of frightening. Suddenly, an angel of the Lord appeared. The angel rolled the giant stone out of the way, opened up the tomb, and then sat on it. The guards fainted in fear. <gasps> the angel told the women not to be afraid. The angel knew they were looking for Jesus. The angel informed the women Jesus was not there. He had risen just as he said he would. The angel told the women to go look in the tomb and see that Jesus was gone. Then he told them to go and tell the disciples what they had seen and that Jesus would meet them in Galilee. As the women ran from the tomb filled with excitement and fear, they met Jesus. What do you think they did? They fell to the ground. Oh, yes. They ran to him. They fell at his feet and they worshipped him. Jesus told them to go and tell the disciples, just like the angel had. This bag says touch, and it's not very heavy. I wonder if there's anything in there. <laughs> mm. All right. So when the women reached the disciples and told them what they had seen, what do you think their reaction was? said, no, he's dead. He can't be alive. Yeah, do you think they denied it? Mm-hmm. 
Did anybody go and look? Peter and John. Okay, Peter and John. So they wondered if the women's words could really be true. Peter and John raced to see for themselves. John reached the tomb first, but Peter rushed past John into the opening. What did they see? Let's find out. Would you like to come and see? Yes. Ooh. Now this one says touch, so I wonder if you're supposed to touch it. Jesus had been laying, and the face cloth, which had been on Jesus' head, folded separately. Before, they had not understood Jesus' words about coming alive again, but now they had seen the empty tomb with their own eyes. Oh my goodness. How exciting. This one says sight. Let's find out what's in this one. Unfortunately, the guards at Jesus' tomb were bribed to say the disciples had come during the night and stolen Jesus' body. But the disciples were gathered in a locked room for fear of what might happen to them, so they couldn't have stolen the body. Suddenly, Jesus appeared in the room and told them to be at peace and not to be afraid. He showed them the wounds in his hands shh, and sighed to prove to them he was Jesus. They had all been there when Jesus died and saw all the horrible things that had happened to his body. All the worries, sadness, and disappointment from Jesus' death were gone. He was the risen king. They were filled with joy and gladness. They thought they had been defeated when Jesus died. But Jesus is more powerful than death. It's a mirror. A mirror. Would you like to look at your face? Yeah. <laughs> All right. This was the very first. Can you sit down, please? This was the very first Easter celebration about 2,000 years ago. <laughs> but from the very beginning, God had a plan to save the person you see when you look in the mirror. He loves you just as much as he loved his disciples. And he wants you to know and love him too. When Jesus came alive after being dead for three days, he conquered three things. Will you hold up three fingers with me? All right, first, Jesus conquered sin. Jesus came to earth to save people from their sin. If it weren't for Jesus, we would have to pay for our own sin. Can anyone tell me what the payment for sin is? Do you know? Romans 6.23 tells us that the payment for sin is death. This isn't talking about the death of our earthly bodies. Because everyone dies here on earth. It's talking about eternal separation from the presence of God. If we were to pay for our own sin, we could never be with God in heaven. But Jesus paid the price for our sin, so we don't have to be separated from God. Second, Jesus conquered death. When Jesus died and came back to life, he showed his power over death. The Bible says Jesus rose from the dead and will never die again. Death has no power over him. When someone dies, we feel sad because we know we will miss that person here on earth. But because we believe in Jesus, we know we won't be separated forever. When Jesus conquered death, he was able to give eternal life to all who believe in him. Just like God gave Jesus a resurrected body, God will one day give all believers perfect 
resurrected bodies to live forever with him. Third, Jesus conquered the devil. Jesus' resurrection defeated God's biggest enemy. Since the moment when the devil rebelled against God in heaven, he has fought against God and worked to overthrow God's kingdom. The devil must have thought he won when Jesus was placed on the cross and then finally in the tomb. But the cross was not the devil's victory. It was God's greatest victory. When Jesus died and came alive again, he defeated the devil. Let's say our memory verse together. God wants every knee to bow to Jesus. Everyone will say, Jesus Christ is Lord. Philippians 2, 10 through 11. Now let's do our craft. For this craft, you'll need a piece of blue paper, a piece of brown paper. We didn't have big brown paper, so we, got, we had to use these little brown papers. A piece of black paper, and a piece of yellow paper. You'll also need a pair of scissors, some glue, and some paper fasteners called brads. All right. So the first thing you're going to do, you're going to take your paper and you're going to write, or you can have mom and dad write, Jesus is risen, just across the top part right here. The next thing you want to do is to cut a semicircle-ish shape out of brown paper. And then you're going to glue it to the blue paper. Is that yours? I've put my glue on my brown paper, and I'm going to attach it to my blue paper. Just like that. Now, you need a smaller piece of black construction paper, and you can cut it into a semicircle or a semi oval. going to put some glue on that one. I've put my glue on my black paper and I'm going to put it on top of my brown paper. Now we have a tube. going to take your brown paper and uh, cut a circle out of it. Now this one you're not going to glue anything to. So now we're going to take our paper fastener for Brad and we're going to poke a hole through the this part. This is going to be our stone for the tomb. my brad and now I'm going to poke it through the rest of the paper here so that when we move it aside
construction paper, and you can have mom or dad help you with this if you don't know how to do it. What I did is I just folded my paper in half and then cut half of a cross out of the paper. And then when I unfold it, then I have a whole cross. I hope you can see that. I hope it's not too small. Now I'm going to glue this onto the top corner of my page.